welcome. Uh, in the last lecture, we posed ourselves a question if n is factorized with m and m prime and if my f is defined in terms of uh, f is defined from z m prime to z. So, this is what we have said uh, and uh, we would like to compute the Fourier coefficient of this g in terms of the capital F. So, now this I can put it as a theorem. So, let capital N is equal to m into m prime and f is from z n by m to c. Define g of n is equal to f of n by m uh, n by m uh, for n is equal to 0 plus or minus m plus or minus 2 m and like this and 0 otherwise. Then g of k is equal to 1 by m f of k. Second also, if I define g of n, if g of n is equal to f of n, remember that so up to m prime minus 1, there is no problem. So, if n is greater than, so which means if we are taking suppose say n is equal to 4, m prime is equal to 2, then so g of 0, this is equal to f of 0, g of 1, this is equal to f of 1. Now, g of 2, now 2 is going to correspond in z 2 as 0. So, I will define this as f of 0 and g of 3 is f of 1. So, this is what is the meaning of f g of n is equal to f of n. Then g of k, this is equal to f of k by m if k is equal to 0 plus or minus m plus or minus 2 m and so on and so forth and 0 otherwise. Okay. So, this, so let us prove this g of k if I take then this is equal to by definition 1 by n summation over n is equal to 0 to n minus of 1 g of n e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n. Now, g of n is defined like this. So, this we can write is that summation over 1 by n, then this is when n is divisible by m, g is taking non-zero value, otherwise it is taking the zero value. So, now this is equal to, I will write it at n prime is equal to 0 to n by m minus of 1 f of n prime then e to the power minus 2 pi i k this n is equal to uh, uh, m, uh, m n prime. So, therefore, this is m n prime divided by n. And uh, this one is uh, going to be now n is equal to m m prime. So, now this is 1 by m into 1 by 
n by m summation over n prime is equal to 0 to n by m minus 1 i k and this is n prime divided by n by m. So, this is nothing but the Fourier coefficient of f. So, just writing it down one can easily get this. Now, for the proof of uh, 2. So, this is uh, this is summation over n equal to 0 to n minus of 1. Let us let me try g k e to the power 2 pi i k n by n. This by Fourier inversion formula this is g n. Now, in our definition it is f n. Now, if I want to put the Fourier inversion formula over here. So, this is going to be summation over k is equal to 0 to uh, n by m minus of 1 f capital F of k and e to the power 2 pi i k uh, n, n is here divided by uh, n by m so, now equating the coefficient of this, now what do we get? We get that g of k is equal to, let me denote uh, this to be k prime, k prime, k prime is equal to f of k prime, if k prime of m into n, this is equal to k n that means, this is equal to uh, what does that mean? That means, k prime is equal to k by m and that is what we would like to get k prime. So, hence g of k is equal to and otherwise this is 0, g of k is going to be 0 if it is not of this form because they are linearly independent. So, therefore, what we get is that this is f of k by m if k is equal to whenever k is divisible by m and 0 otherwise just with the comparing the coefficient. Okay. So, now let us uh, let us see some interesting uh, uh, example based on this observation. So, which is uh, going to be very useful in certain aspects of mathematics and its application. So, this is uh, let us say uh, look at a concrete example. Let f is from z 4 to c. Now, g I am taking from z 8 to c. Now, what I define uh, let us say g of n this is equal to f of n by 2 if n is even and 0 otherwise. because 8 is 2 times 4. So, our m prime is 4 and m is 2. So, then how does this map is going to look like? If I have f of 0 is some a, uh, f of 1 is b, f of 2 is c, f of 3 is d, then g is going to be defined as g of 0 is equal to a, g of 1 this is equal to 0, g of 
2 this is equal to f of 1 which is equal to b g of 3 is equal to 0 g of 4 which is equal to c g 5 0 g 6 d g 7 is equal to 0. So, this I can write this as if f a b c d then what we get our g is equal to a 0 b 0 c 0 d 0. If now let f of a is equal to a uh, capital F at Fourier coefficient because this is going to be again in z 4 d. Then now, if I write the Fourier coefficient of g, this is going to be, this is going to be 1 half 1 by m, m is 2 and then the one by two and then this is a b c d again now g of 5 what we are going to look at so this is going to be a b c d because as you can see what we have derived is uh, here here this is defined in this way. So, now this is g of k equal to 1 by m f of k there in that case m is 2. So, therefore, now 5 will correspond to z 4, uh, 4 is going to correspond to uh, 0 and uh, 5 will be correspond to 1, 0, 5 is correspond to 1, 6 is correspond to 3 and 7 is cor will correspond uh, uh, 2 and then this d is going to correspond to 3. So, similarly, if I define my uh, uh, f a g to be let us say I will add 2 more zeros b 0 0 c 0 0 and d 0 0. That means, I am looking at z 12. Now, here m is 3. Therefore, now this g is going to be 1 by 3 then a b c d a b c d a b c d. So, now for the other part if we would like to define our g to be a b c d a b c d that means g of n is equal to f of n this is what corresponds to g of n is equal to f of n. Now, in this case if I by what we have derived in the theorem, let us write down the g. g is going to be if it is k by m, if k is of the form plus or minus m and 0, otherwise it is 0, that is what the g of k would be. So, the first one is a, then I have 1 is 0 because it is not divisible by 3. So, now, this is uh, going to be b 0 c there here m is 2. So, 0 and d 0. So, 6 I will get d that is uh, f of 3 here 4 f of 2 uh, 
in the case of 2 f of 1 that is b and 0 case f of 0 capital F of 0 that is a and the rest of the things are 0. So, now this is you can see that I mean if I am going to put certain just if I want to extend my function from one uh, finite group to another multiple of n then uh, essentially when I am computing the Fourier transform. So, on the places I am going to uh, fill up the places either by 0 or repeating the Fourier coefficients. So, so another interesting observation one can also get I will write it in the form of the proposition. So, let f from z m into n to c and g I am defining from z n to c the other other side. So, here f I am been given with uh, some let us say 2 n and g is a function uh, uh, from n to c then uh, what is going to be the Fourier transform of g vis a vis the given Fourier transform of f. So, one if suppose g of n. So, what I am doing is some sort of the periodization such that I will get into m into n. Um, so, now this function if I am defining to be l is equal to 0 to m minus of 1 f of n minus l n. This is a periodization. So, now then then g of k this is going to be m times f of m k and then the second one is that if g of n this is equal to f of m n then g of k this is equal to summation over l is equal to 0 to m minus of 1 f of k minus l n. Okay, so, what is the proof of uh, this? So, now I write 1 g of k this is equal to 1 by n summation over n is equal to 0 to uh, n minus of 1. Uh, this is g of n e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n. And we know the formula from 1 by n and this if I put the value this is L equal to 0 to m minus of 1 f of n minus l n that is the definition of g e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n. Now, recall that e to the power 2 pi i any integer that is going to be 1. So, therefore, this I can write this as 1 by n summation over n is from 0 to n minus of 1 summation over l from 0 to m minus 1 f of n minus l n into e to the power minus 2 pi i k times l minus uh, uh, n minus 
l n divided by n because l n by n is l and e to the power 2 pi i k l this is nothing but 1. So, therefore, I can write this now these two sums if I am writing then this is going to be 1 by n combining this two terms is some n prime this is equal to 0 to m n minus of 1 f of n prime e to the power minus 2 pi i k n prime by n. So, this I can do this as uh, uh, I will multiply m by m. Uh, so, this I can now again I can write this as m n prime by m n m m gets cancelled. So, this is 1 by n. So, I want a factor of so, this I can write m into n m. So, this is nothing but the Fourier coefficient of f uh, that is what we want to prove f of m k because this is the m k is coming. Okay. So, exactly in the similar fashion one can get that uh, um, the second part of this. So, which uh, if you uh, uh, do the break of the breaking up the sum like this, you will get the second part proof. is similar. Now, so it will be interesting to the interesting question is going to be that uh, how efficiently we can compute the Fourier coefficient in a finite group in Z n. That is what uh, how many that is what it says that finally, if we ask the computer to compute the Fourier coefficient then how many steps it requires. Now, let us uh, try to understand this problem. So, now what we want to get is that we have a function f from z n to c and we are denoting the Fourier coefficient of f is this is again a function from z n to c. So, we can that means, we are defining f is equal to Fourier coefficient just I am changing the symbol this is what way. So, now let us look at my f this is equal to the column vector f of 0 f of 1 and f of n minus 1 and uh, capital F this is going to be equal to f of 0 f of 1 f of n minus of 1. Now, I need to find a matrix script f which is going to give me that if I act on this f column vector I am going to get uh, capital F the Fourier coefficient again the column vector. So, I am looking for a n cross n matrix which is going to give me um, the Fourier coefficient. Let us take let omega is equal to e to the power minus 2 pi i n by n. So, now, now let us look at. So, what is our Fourier coefficient? Fourier coefficient let us 1 by n summation over n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 f of n e to the power minus 2 pi i n uh, k 
by n. This is what we would like to uh, see. So, now this is no n. Now, consider the matrix F is 1 over n 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 this is omega this is omega square omega to the power n minus of 1 this is omega square omega to the power 4 and omega 2 into n minus of 1 and this is omega n minus of 1 omega 2 times n minus of 1 and omega n minus of 1 n minus of 1. This is what we have defined. Now, if I compute f acting on f then this is going to be f 0 to f n minus of 1. Now, this is now this is summation over f of n n is equal to 0 to n minus of 1. So, now if k is equal to 0 then this is what exactly what we have got. So, this is nothing but f of 0. Now, in the second row if I am multiplying it then what I am going to get I am going to get f 0 plus uh, f of 1 into e to the power uh, 2 pi uh, k is 1 i divided by n plus f of 2 and this goes on up to f of n minus of 1 then this one is omega e to the power 2 pi i uh, n, uh, n minus of 1 by n and this is nothing but f of 1 and so if you do the last one. So, this is f of 0 plus omega to the power n minus of 1 means two e to the power minus 2 pi i n minus of 1 um, by n. So, now that will correspond to f of n minus of 1. So, now this is equal to f just by the matrix multiplication. Now, this says that, uh, so how many arithmetic operation we are now doing to compute all the Fourier coefficient given a function f. So, what we are doing is that now multiplication of the n cross n matrix is going to give, uh, give all our uh, Fourier coefficient. So, which means on, on each of the thing I am multiplying n times and adding n times and uh, so there are n such columns so it is of thing something of the order of n square so now if i am going for a large zn for n large then uh, the computation is going to be n square kind of order of n square which is pretty big now the question is that can we reduce this n square uh, to a lesser quantity can we calculate the Fourier transform more smartly so that we will require less number of steps. So, that we are going to see it in the next lecture. Thank you.